It's been about a week since I posted my first impressions on Doom Zero, the new megawad that was added to Bethesda's 25th anniversary Doom release. I reviewed maps 1 to 10, and for the most part, I had a very positive reaction. In this video, I plan on taking a look at the middle third of Doom Zero, from map 11 to map 20, and see if the megawad gets better or worse from there. One thing that I didn't mention last time were the changes to the plasma rifle. I did explain that there was a new sound effect, but the fire rate is also completely different. Doom Zero removes the reloading animations, so when you stop holding the fire button, there isn't this second long delay anymore. This is a small but cool addition, and it keeps the action fast paced. Map 11 takes place in a city of some kind, and it actually looks like a city. This level is nicely detailed, and there isn't a whole lot to say about it besides that. After map 10, this is a good change of pace, and doesn't give the player too much of a challenge. There is a cyber demon fight in the streets, but they give you plenty of weaponry and space to kill him. This is a solid level, but I don't find myself going back to replay it anytime soon. Map 12 has much more engaging set pieces, including an ambush with several arch vials in a dimly lit cave system. Before that encounter, the main objective in this level is to raise a bridge with hordes of demons spawning in as you do it. I feel like map 12 goes a bit too mental on the Kaku demons for no good reason, but apart from that, the level is pretty good. I like the hellish cave look in the first area, and the archvial encounter can be deadly towards the end. Map 13 is the worst level in Doom Zero so far, unfortunately. There is an annoying switch platforming puzzle that takes way too long to figure out and then manoeuvre through. Then after that is taken care of, you get a fuck ton of pain elementals to kill before you reach the level exit. This is not fun, this is irritating and boring combat design. I'm also not a huge fan of the Arachnatron fight when you finish the platforming puzzle, but the pain elementals of a cherry on top of a shit sundae. I would skip map 13 if you can. Map 14 is better, but it's still pretty forgettable. I like the part in the beginning with all of the demons attacking you from these high ledges, since it kind of reminds me of Plutonia map 16, but that's about it. The level isn't bad, but it blends in too much with the crowd. So we've reached map 15, and before you ask, I will probably cover the secret levels in another video. I didn't access them on this playthrough, but I will make sure to play them, most likely from a pistol start. That being said, map 15 is pretty neat, with a nice outdoor area where you have to control this bridge and then hop across. This level also features a fork in the road, and the player needs to run through all three pathways in order to complete the map. Each path connects up together in some way, and overall, map 15 is good stuff. I wish we spent a little more time outside, because I think it's the best looking part of the level, but that's okay, because the techno interior looks good too. Map 16 opens up with a huge toxic waste mountain, and I think it looks awesome. Yeah, it probably would have looked cooler if it was filled with blood or something, but it still gets the job done. One of the interesting quirks about this map is how you need to cover the toxic waste using a switch, and I think this is great. The combat encounters beforehand are good too, with a horde of mancubi, chain gunners, and pain elementals coming after you. I stood back and took them out from afar using the plasma rifle, and it was cool seeing them from this narrow perspective. The only downright bad part about map 16 is where you need to blow up these barrels to progress, and I suggest saving here if you haven't already. I personally think I just got lucky, but there's probably a strategy that I'm missing, and I currently look like an asshole who couldn't figure it out, but whatever. Towards the end, there is another archvile ambush, because Doom Zero loves putting archvials in at the end of stages. I'm all good with this, since archvials keep you on your toes, and this wad teaches the player that they should still be on edge even towards the exit. Map 17 is next, and it's just alright. I feel like this level runs out of steam and recycles old gimmicks from previous maps. 
The player has to raise a bridge to progress, there is a platforming puzzle that utilises switches, etc. Surprisingly, there isn't an arch vile encounter towards the end, but regardless, map 17 is a competent Doom Zero level, and that's about it. That all aside, there is a good combat scenario in the platforming section, with a group of barons swarming the player. Since you're in a relatively small room with various platforms around the place, the barons can easily corner you and I thought this was brilliant design. The puzzle itself is nothing new, and we've seen it before in the WAD though. Map 18 is a short level, but it has some unique elements at the same time. There is a little racing section where you have to hit a switch and then run quickly to reach the door in time. Along with this part, there is a tough combat encounter towards the end with an arch file, you guessed it, coupled with some mancubi. The mancubi are tanky and directly block the player from hitting the arch file. If you try and take out the mancubi, the arch archvile will just spawn them in again, so you really have to prioritise the archvile. This is a great little combat challenge, and map 18 is a pretty solid level. I think the first third of Doom Zero was much stronger, but it's very normal for Megawads to kinda sag towards the middle. Even John Romero has said that this is how the original Doom games were structured. Map 19 has a great industrial aesthetic to it, however, the rest of the level is bogged down in timed switch puzzles and sections where you need to hit a sequence of switches to lower the floor down to get to a new area. Area. I don't remember any of the combat encounters or enemy placements because I'm too busy trying to figure out the layout of these stupid puzzles. It's a shame too, because map 20 is where we meet a brand new enemy and map 19 should gear us up for that. That being said, map 20 includes another tedious barrel section that again, I only got past due to luck I think. Then, as we drop down, we meet this scary looking bitch. You can't damage her, and she doesn't attack you with her own moveset. Instead, she spawns in demons to come and do the job for her. From what it looks like, all the player needs to do is walk through this corridor and go to the level exit. This is underwhelming as fuck, but perhaps in the last level we actually get to fight her or something. Only time will tell, but that has been Doom Zero maps 11 to 20. Even though there were some standout levels, I do think that the first third of this world was stronger. I mean it had more gimmicks, it had more interesting puzzle elements, and it had more fan service, let's face it. However, I'm not going to sit here and say that maps 11 to 20 were bad, because for the most part, they were good with a couple of bland maps here and there. Also, every megawad is going to have less than stellar levels, and I think that's due to the game's overall length. The fact that Dash created all 32 levels in Doom Zero by himself is commendable, and it's something that I can never do, especially not to this quality. Dash has informed me as well that there is a new version of Doom Zero, which fixes some issues with the Megawad, but I have not downloaded it yet. When I get to making my third and final video on Doom Zero, tackling the rest of the levels in the WAD, I will point out the changes made in the most recent version. I have complete respect for Dash and his work on Doom Zero, and I'm looking forward to playing the rest of the maps. Please also let me know in the comments about what you think of this Megawad, as I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you for watching.